Okay, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Distorted Trumpet Show. We are back in the Trumpet Dungeon and we are going through our state of the pedal board shows. And now we are going to see my other pedal board. We've seen my basic pedal board and this is the Beast. So what I have here is currently my ultimate ambient guitar pedal board. Um, so I'm just gonna rip it up, it's super heavy. <laughs> And you can see it's a bit bigger than the other ones we've demoed. Phil, I'm really sorry if this table dies. <laughs> if it dies, hopefully you're... Uh, uh, is there anything valuable underneath it? Uh, just, just my just pedals and the boot and the speaker. Okay, so, I mean, actually most of the weight of this is the case. So this yeah. is a, a Harley Benton spaceship. Um, just remind myself of the side. It's 60 by... It's like 120 by by 60. Um, and let's get the little fellow out. So maybe we can lift it. You see, it's actually not very heavy. It's no. just the box that's heavy. Just close that. Drop that on the floor. And then let's hold it up. Now the synth is not attached. The synth is low. And the metal is not attached, but I think apart from that, we're good. So that should be okay. That's gonna have to do. Okay. So this is currently my ultimate pedal board, except for two exceptions, which I'll come on to. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go through the signal chain. First of all, I'm gonna explain a decision that I've taken with this, this pedal board. And that is that I've got my amp on the board. So this is the Blackstar Amp Edge 2, and it is an amp. Now, the reason that I've put an amp on the board is that, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, delay always sounds better when it goes into an effects loop. And a lot of people will run cables, they'll have a pedal board, with a cable running to an amp and then a cable coming out of the effects loop back to the pedal board and then going into the delay and wow. all those sort of modulated effects and then back into the amp i tried that i just i haven't got the patience for it yeah so what i have i have my amp here and then in the effects loop i've got the the hx effects so so that's that's right. the principle of this that i've got in front effects I've got amp and I've got effects loop, and it's going to give us something special at the end, and I'll explain as we get onto that. So, looking at my signal chain as it stands currently, we have the um, the Electro Harmonics, the EHX Super Ego Plus. This is an ambient guitarist dream. It's a drone pedal. You play a chord or a note, you whack whack the button, and it holds that, and it will drone. Um, so this is, th there was a previous one which was just a super ego, you press the button and it just held the note. Mm. But this one has got all the modulation, so you can put tremolo, you can put various effects on it, so it'll, it'll build and descend, you can define how long it comes in. Nice. You can also get it to do automatically. This is just an amazing, amazing pedal for ambient music. After that, and mainly this signal flow, <laughs> is just so I can get everything to fit on the board. So it may not be the best signal flow. After that, we are going into the Boss SY300, which is, in my opinion, the best synth pedal out there. Um, now there are other synth pedals that are really great. Um, why I really like this one is that it can also act as, a US, as, as an interface. So I can plug this into my computer. I can record my guitar directly. Um, it even has all of the Boss um, the Boss Overdrive pedals, the clone. So you can, I have used this as a guitar recording tool um, without oh, wow. doing any synth stuff. But then it's got all the synth stuff. It's got so much control, MIDI out, expression pedals. It is amazing. 
After the synth, we go into the Digitec FreeCount, I believe. Yes. Now, the FreeCount is a feedback machine. Um, so you play a note, and as that note sustains, it generates feedback. Right. Yep. Um, and you can choose the nature of that feedback. You can choose if it's um, a low or a high harmonic octave. It can be a, a first, a second, a third, a fifth. Wow. Um, you can choose the intensity of it. You can choose whether it's on all the time or whether it's latch. Um, it, it, it's wonderful. It's it's really wonderful. Don't have it on all the time, but when you want to make a make a funny noise, you can play with it. And if you get it right, you can hold that note, that that feedback, and move your hand around, and it sounds like a whale noise shrieking. It's ah, cool. it's fantastic. Nice. After the Digitech Freak Count, I've got a Digitech Brother, that's the Digitech Ricochet. So that is an octaver. It can go up or down um, two octaves each way. Um, question here about whether I would prefer to have the Whammy or the Ricochet. I would probably have both, but then I would need a bigger board. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was one of the provisos. The proviso is that I would for the ultimate pedal board, I would have this and the whammy as well, because there's so much fun you can have with the whammy. But the best thing about the ricochet is you've got this um, setting called ballistic. So when you activate the low or the high signal, <clears throat> when you turn it off, you can have it slide back to its original. So you can, so if it goes down, it will slide back up and you can choose the speed of that slide. Um, so you can have it very quick or instantaneous, so you don't notice it, but you can have it very slow, so you get this which is uh, which is a fun thing to play with. After that, I have the TC Electronic Quintessence, which is a harmonizer. Um, so this is a real kick-ass <laughs> harmonizer. Um, you can choose from everything from first, second, third. You choose the scale you're in. Um, a, B, C, D, F, G, flat or sharp, and then you choose the mode. Is it uh, Dorian, Mixolydian, Lydian? You know, everything is okay. in there. Um, you can choose the interval, and there are custom ones as well. The one I've got it on at the minute is actually a an arpeggiated harmony, which is just wild. An arpeggiated um, harmony. So it plays it plays a harmony, but it doesn't play it straight away, and it plays multiple. Oh, okay. So. Okay. So it's almost like it's an arpeggiating function. So when you say it's got the key on it, is it is it assuming that you're playing in the right key or is it intelligent? No, no. So you have to set it for every song. So you, if right. you're in a, playing a song in E minor and then there's a key change in that song, you're, you're going to have to be down there twiddling. Twiddling the knobs. Yeah. And likewise, if you set that to C and you started playing in D, it's, it's gonna. It's not going to give you something nice. No. Or maybe it is. Yeah. It's ambient music, yes, that's what you absolutely. want. Absolutely. After that, we've got drive. So we have got um, a clone and a metal zone. So uh, transparent overdrive and some fuzz. So just some light fuzz is the way I've got it set. On my Black Star amp, so this is my amp, I've got it set clean. I've got it to the clean function. I normally have a bit of reverb on. Um, this also acts as a tuner. This is my tuner on this board, although the HX effects has a tuner as well as does this. So I've got three tuners on this board. No excuse to so I've got no tune. <laughs> no reason to be out of tune. Um, this does have reverb, it has delay, it has mod which is either phaser or chorus depending on how you set it. So normally I have additional um, chorus and delay in case I want to put some extra on and then a boost. And that boost can be an overdrive of fuzz or a clean boost. I would typically have that as a clean boost. Then Finally, the HX effects, and for my um, my current ambient setup, I have a patch, and you can see, um, I believe there's enough for 12 pedals, depending on the memory each pedal takes with any, within any particular patch. So the patch that I have for ambient has three different delays. <clears throat> um, one of them is this kind of cosmos reverb delay, which is just wild, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got, yeah. crazy stuff. One of them is a reverse delay. 
I also have a ver fairly standard boss style 70s chorus. Um, I have a tremolo, so just a nice gentle tremolo. And um, I have a looper. So in there I've got the, uh, the standard HX effects looper, the standard helix looper, mm. um, which is great. It's very easy to use. Um, and the reason I think this one is really good, I mean, there are plenty of other loopers out there that do the same thing, but it has, um, it has half speed and it has reverse. So for ambient music to suddenly slow the loop down. So that again, and then, it's got half speed. So it'll, oh, so it'll loop it and play it back at So half you've got speed. your loop, da, 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 yeah. da, then it'll play, you can play it at half speed. Okay. And you oh, can play it reverse. So right. you can play it backwards. Nice. Half speed backwards. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. There's one final thing which I really like about the HX effects, and that is that there's two outputs. So the the left or mono output is coming back into my amp, and then that's going into a Marshall cab, a normal Marshall one by twelve cab. But this has got a stereo out. And all the delay chorus tremolo effects I've selected are stereo effects. So when I really want to go to town, I will run the right output into a separate amp. So I have one amp for all these stereo effects. And most of these pedals have got stereo outs as well. So this one does, the uh, SY300 does, and the Super Ego does. So you could even take those effects, run them straight to a PA, mm. run them to a different amp. Very cool. So this is my dream rig, except for the uh, the whammy, which I would put in front as well, and probably one of the most important pedals for um, ambient, which is this. What's this? Uh, that is a boss something. I don't know. It's a volume pedal. Ah. So yeah, I think for um, for ambient stuff, you need a volume pedal as well. Uh -huh. It's not on the board because it doesn't need power. It's just a it's just a you know yeah a standalone standalone pedal and would you usually use all of those at once or sort of just dipping it out of all of the the different ones or? yeah so um i guess it's kind of just so i'll just finish on the volume pedal first so the volume pedal um there's a question mark in my head about where i'd actually put it so just because of simplicity i'm putting it at the front so it's controlling the volume of the whole thing and i want to sort of Turn the, turn the volume off, play a note, and then turn the volume on, and that sort of gives you that sort of whale yeah. sound. Thing. Yeah. But you know, theoretically, you could put it around about the drive, and then you can actually affect the amount of distortion you're going to get. Mm. And you could put it at various different levels, but I think that's an important part of the kit for a uh, um, pedal. So, sorry, you're asking, which ones will I turn on at any one time? So, yeah. um, the synth is amazing, and there's so much you can do with it, but you have to be very, very sensitive with it. Right. Um, because if you're playing strings, you probably don't want the the octava and fuzz distortion and things to be captured at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's where the trick of um, ambient music comes, that you're you're being very subtle, yeah. subtle with it. So. Um, nice. Even the clone, I'm not on with them. So that's um, that's my current ultimate mega <laughs> ambient uh, pedal board love it any questions no i think you've uh, covered everything there i think we need to do some future videos where we play with all of these boards and we will do and uh show you what these sound like in reality absolutely cool Thank okay you, well, JJ. goodbye from the dungeon see you next time see you later Wow.